Uh, Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Uh, so as you know, we are basically discussing uh, the very important issues in physics, generally uh, the aspects regarding what we call as the mechanical work done. So last time uh, we made a discussion regarding the conservative forces, and we reached uh, we reached the I mean. The number of conclusions and we got some remarkable number of conclusions uh, relative to the I mean, conservative forces and all that but today we will discuss I mean exactly very new thing uh, related to this thing that's what we call as uh, the work kinetic energy theorem work kinetic energy Principle. Sometimes we call it so, but I will just call it theorem here. Uh, this looks very suited here to, I mean, to a number of aspects, because uh, if I look to this kind of heading, uh, there is a work and the kinetic energy. Means that means that this principle or this theorem it basically connects work by means uh, through with. I mean the kinetic energy okay so it's a very applied principle in physics by the way but here what it exactly states if uh, some work is done on the system by means of the forces and all that it leads to the change in kinetic energy this is what the statement of this theorem is all about it states like if there is a I mean some total number of forces which are going to act acted on which, which acts on a system in a way that work is going to done okay at the same time there is change in kinetic energy of a system doesn't matter for me if my system is initially at rest or it has some kinetic energy but at the same time when work is going to done on the system there must be the corresponding change in kinetic energy i told you as before when we talk about this principle uh, there is a connection between the work and the kinetic energy okay when we do some mathematical story about this fellow, we'll come to know how exactly this represents. But its statement is simply like, if there is uh, I mean, uh, the kind of work done by means of the total force which acts on a system, there is a corresponding corresponding change in the kinetic energy. This is this is a statement of work kinetic energy principle or theorem. Okay. Again, if I will use my definition of work done in a more general way here, here, like. If my work then between the two positions x1 and x2, okay, from integral x1 to x2 by means of force, there is a kind of displacement. I use here, I mean, the one one dimensional kind of notions and all that because it will just try to simplify my analysis and all that. As you know, it's it's uh, always, I mean. Mm. Very, very easy to work in one dimensions than in high dimensions so anyway uh, now now I will just reach the, this level of conclusion I, I use here the statement when we talk about the work kinetic energy theorem this 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 statement is basically gives a connectivity between work and the kinetic energy but we are not exactly in a way to conclude it in a more I mean mm, simplest way but first of all I'm going to use here the thing which I, which I, I mean, uh, on which we discuss, uh, I mean, the number of times in the, uh, I mean, previous number of lectures and all that, here it's been work done between the two points, the force is going to be implemented and there is a kind of displacement, it's a well-known expression for us right now, okay? Uh, look, look, if I will just use this kind of notion here, if my particle is here, it's represented with position x1, at some later time, my particle is here. I just represent it within position x2. Here is my mass of particle. Okay, I have some system, or I can say the particle. It's it's something to I mean I represent here, and I'm I'm just putting the mass on the particle as m. Okay, on which force is going to act, and my particle it displaces it, and the new position of the particle at some later time is t. Okay. Obviously, if I will use the I mean conclusion of the Newton's second law, that force is always by mass times acceleration. Okay, and if I write it, I mean these two equations are equal, right? Okay, 
if I will just put my I mean the four situation here what I will get is I will get here yes yes I will get here if my particle has a mass m it accelerates it accelerates with this rate okay so here is my what I can say dx this is my position first and this is my position second okay so I can write the above integral in this way no issues here are simply I am going to place or I am going to switch my the I mean expression for the force as conformal from the story of Newton's second line all that I am getting this sort of conclusion here right now if I will just further I mean simplify it what I will get is if I will remind my definition of velocity if I will just remind my definition of velocity what's that velocity is defined as rate of change of the displacement okay or i can write my this differential displacement it is v dt okay now if i will switch the value of dx here what i will get yes yes i will get again integral from x1 to x2 m dv or dt is yes, it's some v dt okay time is something scalar i can i can just i can just i mean cut it here so what I will get here is yes from lost lost equation I am getting here my work done it is basically m is m is my constant so I can kick it outside from the integral equation okay so here is my x1 and here is my x2 here is my dv here is my dot v okay so this was a particle displacement okay this was a particle displacement when some differential element of displacement is now as a differential velocity i will change my limits so it's my v1 and it will go to v2 okay yes this equation seems to be right now more sound through all the ways around now look here look here if i want to know first of all if i want to simplify this dot product here how i can simplify it very simple if i have the kind of i mean uh, the particle it moves with velocity v along this direction okay at any subsequent instant of time if i want to know i want to know the particle velocity it will be dv isn't it isn't it so my velocity is this way and the differential velocity is along the same way means that means that means and that means and that if i will just and just solve my this dot product here it will be a simply v dv it will be simply v dv no issues here are because when I use this velocity vector here I want to know at some subsequent instant of time my dv velocity vector so obviously it, it will be along the same direction okay when the two vectors are the same direction same direction their angle must be zero okay so cosine of zero is maximum that's one so I'm getting here this much of I mean thing after solving this dot product so if i will solve it further if i will solve it further this is an integral in a one variable here here the variable is velocity so it will be just my m v square by 2 here is my v1 okay and here is my v2 for a moment if i will just place here the vectors so no issues there are no issues there are okay so i'm getting here this thing this thing as you know as you know from from the very basics of the physics this equation is what we call as the kinetic energy okay from the left hand side we have we have something with work okay and here is some one minus m one half of m if i will put the higher limit it is v2 if i will put here the lower limit it's v1 okay now now if i will just do it if i will do here one more step as you know the magnitude of square of the magnitude of vector is simply I mean if I have the vector here this way is this is my velocity vector okay and its velocity vector will really, again in the same way okay and v dot v v dot v I can write it as the magnitude of v it is simply v square okay because it's magnitude of v that's v magnitude of v that's v cosine of zero that's one so it is simply v square so here if i write it this way or if i write it this way it's one at the same it's one at the same it's one at the same okay so my work then here is of this form this is my initial kinetic energy of the particle so this is my final kinetic energy of the particle 
and this is my kinetic energy of the particle at the initial most moment if i will just represent it by k2 and this by k1 it is nothing but the delta k okay delta k so this is a mathematical statement of work kinetic energy theorem if work is done on the system by means of the forces there must be the corresponding change in kinetic energy this is how exactly this principle is all about or this theorem is all about this theorem basically connects the two things here one is a work and another is i mean the kinetic energy it is i mean the reflection of the code that i used in the last discussion if i remind to you like when we talk about the work and energy they are basically an equivalent quantities despite of this thing it will give for the such a things such a notion or such a representation of different forms of energy aside we come to the conclusion like the work and energy basically they are an equivalent quantities when there is work there is a energy okay so this is a kind of i mean the proof of that statement that i used somewhere in last discussion but here it is exactly the representative of uh the above heading here that's a work kinetic energy so okay if i will do the simple problem on this context in a way like so if work is done on the system there must be the corresponding change in the kinetic energy okay as the kinetic energy for the particle motion is defined as half of mv square it depends upon the speed of particle mass of the particle it's a form of energy that's associated with the motion of any object or particle okay it depends upon the mass and the speed of particle okay <sighs> uh, so if i will just assign a problem here Uh, suppose there is a kind of frictionless table here. I will use. I will just represent my table by the single line. Or if I will, I will, I will write for a moment. For a moment, it gives me table like this one. Okay. If there is a kind of chain, okay, chain, chain is of this type. But like this way and this way. Okay. if it's given in a problem like 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 the 2/3 of the chain to if the chain has whole length l and its mass is m okay if i have given chain that some part of the chain is lies on some frictionless table okay and if this is a surface of table some part of the chain lies on this okay 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 the bigger part is in here that lies on the table if of the chain lies lies on this frictionless i mean the smooth table it's very important to mention because it will help us to understand give the proper understanding about and, and i mean uh, way to, uh, how can i mean analyze this problem fully and all that i'm using here the very important word my 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 surface of this uh, the table it's basically the table is it's a smooth in it has a smooth surface on which uh, some part of the chain is lying here if it's given in a problem the two third part of the chain is lying on the surface of table two third part of its length if if the chain has whole length l mass m if the two third of length means 2 by 3 of l is lying on the table we can safely say if l is the total length and two third of i mean its length is being lie on this what's the pending length let us assume that it's x it will be l minus 2 l by 3 after the simple phi i will get here l by 3 means this length this is my l by 3 okay now 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 if it's given that what will be the kinetic energy kinetic energy of this chain when when whole of whole of whole of it it is being slipped from this smooth when whole of its length will slip slip away from i mean from i mean the smooth smooth table okay i'll just i will just i mean and restate the problem here or once more if the two two third of the length of the chain it lies on over this smooth table and what will be the kinetic energy of this chain when achieve the kinetic energy okay we need to calculate the kinetic energy of 
the chain okay initially if i will look the problem problem does not involve any kind of motion okay so initially my initial kinetic energy my initial kinetic energy means k1 okay i can say that ki it's zero because my system is at rest chain is at rest there is not any kind of motion but what happens here basically when i use the term my table is smooth means there is not any kind of friction so at some later time gravity will play a part first of all it's a gravitational potential energy that is going to be stored here okay if i want to know how exactly the gravitational potential energy will be there must be the kind of the loss of gravitational potential energy and that that loss of gravitational potential energy will lead, will lead to the gain in kinetic energy okay let me let me come know how exactly at some former case or uh, sorry at some later case what kinetic energy will be but at initial most situation my kinetic energy is zero means that my system exists here at the first place means i can i can look to the, this fellow i can easily say that my kinetic energy at the first place is zero if i want to know the kinetic energy at some later time means kf this is a thing that i need to be find here but it's not known to me how exactly i mean the kinetic energy will be but there is a kind of i mean thing that i will use here it's basically this principle it will give me everything here in a way how let you say look look it is basically at the first place i have the length some part of the chain that's going to be hang over from the table okay if i want to know the first of all what's the gravitational potential energy that will be associated due to this hanging part for that what i will do here yes i will i will choose my point of reference in order to calculate the point of in order to calculate the potential energy because while on calculating the point, uh, point i mean potential energy the reference point is an arbitrary you can choose any of the choice of reference point is arbitrary you can choose any of the reference point in order to calculate the potential energy there are no bounds at all at all but i will use that kind of i mean uh, the reference point which will give the kind of i mean simplest understanding about this problem i will choose my reference point from the surface if i will choose my reference from the surface of the table means that means that at the surface at the surface taking the zero reference of the potential energy means that if i will measure my potential energy from the surface of table okay so i will choose my zero reference potential energy from from the surface of table if i will calculate my potential energy above the table i will take it positive okay below the reference i will take my potential energy negative okay this is the only thing that you need to understand here uh, there is one more way to i mean deal with this problem i will get the same conclusion but but uh, i mean to encounter the problem of this type what i will do here i will use here the kind of motion here in order to choose my reference point above or below i will open to the signs for the calculation of potential energy okay if i will i will choose my reference point at the surface of this table zero reference point zero potential energy reference at the surface of the table below this my potential energy will be negative and above this my potential energy will be positive okay so basically we are talking here about here the gravitational potential energy we know that the gravitational potential energy depends upon the height how how height how much high the object is or how much the below the object is from 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 some reference okay as we know the potential energy basically it's a reference parameter it is reference dependent parameter okay but you can choose any of the reference point you will reach the same conclusion so in the present situation i will choose my reference point at at uh, as at the surface of table okay if this is my zero reference potential energy here what will be the i mean gravitational potential energy associated with this hanging part having the length of a3 okay how i will do it here see if i will take any element of this i mean of this what i can say chain let us assume that it has a it has a length of x if i will introduce my variable here if i will introduce my variable here yes x okay i know that for for this much of length my x it will change from 0 to l by 3 0 to l by 3 it's an initial situation that i am going to represent here here 
it's it's a condition when my kinetic energy is going to be zero okay preferentially at an initial most situation i am going to optimize my variable here x its value will change for change from zero to l by three for this hanging part of the chain okay so if i will calculate my potential energy i will introduce one more thing here that's what we call as the mass per unit length if i will use my ratio here if i will just i mean introduce one more parameter here that's what i call here lambda and lambda is my is linear mass density here that's mass per unit length mass per unit length okay if the mass of the chain is l m sorry and its length is l so i am introducing my parameter and this represents a ratio like mass per unit length and it's defined as the linear mass density of a given chain okay why i am basically choosing this ratio here it is it's, it's a very important ratio like like if i take here the little element here obviously it will consisting of it will consist of the mass dm okay this little element dx it will consist of the mass dm but what's the beauty of this ratio this linear mass density will be again same it's very it looks very harder to absorb but it's true it's true in a way like if i will take any other element any any element of this chain have any mass and if i look for this ratio it will always same it doesn't matter whether i will take the whole mass and the whole length of the chain or i will take any differential length and the differential mass of the chain when i define this ratio it will be always same okay it's true after the great approximation it looks harder to absorb but but believe me it's so okay now 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 if i will i want to know what's the potential energy associated with uh with this in this part of the chain yes how much it will be yes it's a moment when my kinetic energy at the initial state is zero means that my my um my chain it does not possess any kind of motion the potential energy for this hanging part is this yes it will be u i yes it will be yes minus minus integral yes dm dmg yes yes for this much of it is at a distance of x okay hope you are getting i'm basically using this expression here this is an expression for the gravitational potential energy and my ui it will be s but the limits of integration it will change from 0 to l by 3 okay i told you as before why i'm going to do this but if i will put my lambda is here dm by dx okay so my my dm yes it will be lambda dx okay if i will put it here it will be minus m 0 to l by 3 lambda dx g okay lambda is constant g is constant i have only one variable yes here is x of its own x dx okay so it will be yes minus lambda g after integrating it what i will get yes i will get here l square by yes it will be yes x square okay that will be x square by 2 and it will be l square by 9 that will be 18 okay hope uh, you are you are getting it while from the things come and all that if i will replace the value of this lambda here yes how much it will be is yes. lambda is at the first place it is defined as the mass per unit length so it will be is yes. my lambda will be here m by l okay one goes with this so here is no l i am getting here my initial initial potential energy is there my m g l over 18 okay this is my initial potential energy it's an energy potential energy associated with this hanging part because we are going to do here all such under the gravity force for this part my potential energy will be zero okay i choose this reference here but if i will take this whole length it will have the same potential energy this much because for this much my potential energy is zero okay i have no need to calculate the potential energy for this it's an advantage of taking the reference point here for the calculation of potential energy and all that
So my u i is here, yes, u i is here minus m g l over 18. I will just number it first. So when whole, when whole chain will, it will slip over this, it will slip over this uh, smooth uh, surface of table. What will be the final potential energy? Yes. Below the reference, again, I will take my potential energy zero. But if I am talking about this whole, whole means that I have to integrate it from zero to L. Okay. It may, when it go down, 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 when it put all here, the moment when my, when, when this part of chain will be here, I will have the chain like this way. Okay. So for that, I will integrate it zero to L. Okay. Because here, whole length of the chain will be considered in the case second right now what will be the potential energy at this moment yes yes again i will use here lambda lambda is g dx okay so my uf it will be yes minus but here is x yes it is lambda g it will be yes l square by 2 okay or uh, my uf it will be yes mgl by 2 okay. this is my final final most potential energy associated with the system when whole chain whole chain it slips or from this uh, smooth uh, surface of table okay now if i want to know the loss in the potential energy loss in the potential energy yes what will be the loss in potential energy? Yes. The work that I am doing in against the potential energy is it will be the loss in potential energy. Loss in the potential energy, it is an initial kinetic energy. Initially, I have the kinetic sorry, initial potential energy that's minus mgl 18 is yes, minus of minus mgl by 2. Okay. <sighs> It will be minus mgl or 18 plus mgl or 2 yes i think it will be mgl is 2 it is 9 it is minus 1 it will be 8 over this how much it will be at 8 over this so it will be 4 yes i think it will be minus mg mgl 4 Sorry, it will be plus plus 4 mgl by 9 okay yes if i will do it here it will be mgl by 2 it is minus 1 by 9 plus 1 okay so it is here it is here like this it is 8 by 9 okay and 2 it is 2 2 4 yes it is 4 by yes it is 4 by 9 mgl this is my work here that that i have uh, due to the force of gravity and all that so so this work then basically will correspond to the change in kinetic energy this work then will correspond to the change in kinetic energy it will be 4 mgl by 9 it will be yes delta k okay so it will be yes k final minus k initial it will be 4 by 9 mgl okay but initially the system has a zero kinetic energy now the kinetic energy that i have it is 4 by 9 mgl okay this is this is i mean the kinetic energy for the chain when it when it slips over um, from from the smooth table and all that this is i mean amount of energy that uh, the system possesses but it will be in the form of kinetic one in the later case okay so this was all about uh, this thing Thank you.